Good morning, folks. We've got some key top science news today. Storms ripped across the states again last night. Let's run it all down and close with confirmation of the Earth facing quiet from NASA scientists. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star were mostly quiet. The active regions are not producing solar flares. The coronal holes are patchy and weak. The solar wind eased back a bit. You'll recall it had regained that slightly intensified character in the stream, but that is waning this morning and geomagnetic conditions are quiet. Top quake of the last day struck the middle of the Atlantic on the ridge. We've seen a number there the last few weeks. Hopefully, nothing major is coming. And we go to the lightning overlays. The storms brought powerful winds with the lightning line, taking out a few buildings and power to hundreds of thousands of people. This is the minute-by-minute -minute lightning return from GOES-16. When I mentioned that the wind convergence area is where the energy lights up like a line, this was a great example as cooler northern air swung around from the northwest to meet the warm, moist air coming up from the south. Let's go to a new way to detect CMEs automatically. These machine learnings exist for SOHO LASCO coronagraphs, but those block out a few solar radii. Using high processing on the UV images of the solar disk can now provide not only a window into the CME evolution, but offer an extra hour or two of warning. But then again, so can just watching the sun. Interesting bit up next, lunar rock falls. Earth is not the only place where a landslide-like activity occurs and a new map detailing every detected rockfall on the moon is presented. Link below. Up next, folks, I'll be happy to put this one to bed. The neutrinos and cosmic rays seen blasting up out of the Earth were not in fact from the Earth. As we mentioned months ago when ANITA results were first announced, the culprit is found deep beneath the surface ice at a layer called the fern. The cosmic rays that are constantly blasting the upper atmosphere have components that can pass the entire way through the Earth, and that was also considered a possibility for the ANITA cosmic rays. But alas, these cosmic rays are penetrating the Antarctic ice, hitting the fern layer, and being reflected back up and out. A good note on the radiation protection of water and the proper explanation for the upward cosmic rays in Antarctica. This next one is going to the Astrophysical Journal, and it delivers a key fact about the plasma outflows of the galaxy. It turns out the tremendous magnetic fields within those outflows are helping to control the star formation activity nearby. By the way, the inflows to the galaxy are connected to filaments from the cosmic web, the outflows feed the disk and the circumgalactic medium. Sticking with the same basic concept, but getting the other half of the one-two punch. That magnetism in the outflows, obviously, has an ionization structure underlying it. This one also indicates that the electromagnetic component of these material flows is key to positive feedback star formation. Outflows, one of the key future science items of galactic astrophysics. And last but not least, Three scientists from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center have confirmed that while the levels of solar flaring were not much different from solar cycle 23 to solar cycle 24, the limb eruptions in cycle 24 were 42% more prevalent. The CMEs were slower, and that means that the sun was firing less often at Earth, more often away from Earth, and doing so with less power overall. The less power and speed are indicative of the continued march towards solar grand minimum, perhaps as soon as right after the sunspot cycle. But the propensity to preferentially fire at the limb is one of the two key points of the Earth-facing solar quiet effect, and this is as solid a confirmation with actual numbers and statistics as we could ever hope for. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Our textbook on the sun is available again. The third edition takes us to 300 pages, 500 citations, and less than half the price of any of the five textbooks you'd need to cover all this material. The sun, weather, earthquakes, health, technology, and the end of the world. Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.